All right, test number two reveal is going to be 2.4 to 2.8. We're going to start with finding the average rate of change using the graph. So for number one, we want to find the average rate of change between x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 0. So we want to find the y for each of these. So when x is negative 4, what's our y? Zero. Awesome. And when x is zero, what's our y? One. Yep. So we can call our first point x1, y1. The second point, x2, y2. You want to do it in the order that it gives it to you. In. So what is our formula for rate of change? Awesome, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to plug in everything I have. 1 minus 0 over 0 minus negative 4. Be super, super careful with your signs. A lot of the mistakes that people made on the quiz were just sign errors. So I have 1 over what? 4. So our answer would be 1 fourth. All right, let's look at number 2. So we want to find the rate of change between x is equal to negative 2 and 2. So when x is negative 2, what's our y? Zero. When x is 2, what's our y? Two. So x1, y1, x2, y2, let's plug them in. 2 minus 0 over 2 minus negative 2. 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 minus negative 2 would be 4. Can I simplify 2 over 4? No. 1 half. Do not forget to simplify. Again, another mistake that a ton of people made on the quiz was not simplifying the fraction all the way. Okay, I want to make sure we have time to get through all of them, so I'm going to skip number three. If we have time, I'll come back for it. But for four and five, we want to determine if the function's even, odd, or neither. So let's look at number four. How do I determine if the function's even, odd, or neither? Plug in a number and its opposite. If we get opposite numbers, then they are odd. If we get the same number then they're even. If we get totally different numbers, then it is neither. So what number do we want to plug in here? Two. I would always suggest plugging in two and negative two. It's just going to be the easiest to do the math with. So we have six times two cubed minus five over two times two squared plus seven. Two cubed is eight and eight times six is... Forty-eight and forty-eight minus five, forty-three, and then on the bottom we have two squared, which is four. Four times two is eight, and eight plus seven, fifteen. Can I simplify forty-three over fifteen? No. So this would be not our answer, but that is what we get when we plug in two, and then I also want to plug in negative two and find out what we get here. So six times negative two cubed minus five over two times negative two squared plus seven. This would be negative 48 minus five. So we get negative, negative 53. And then 2 squared is positive 4, so we would get positive 15. So negative 53 over 15, is that the same as 43 over 15? Yeah. Are they opposites? Yeah. So what would our answer be? Mm -hmm. Neither. All right, let's take a look at 6. We want to describe the transformations. So starting with the negative on the outside, what does that do to our graph? 
reflection on the X. What about when we multiply by four on the outside? Vertical stretch. What about when we add seven on the inside? We go which way? Left seven. And then subtract nine on the outside? Down nine. All right, let's look at seven. So here we have a negative being multiplied on the inside. What does that do? Reflection on the Y. What about when we multiply by five on the inside? <coughs> Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal shrink by a factor of one fifth. Perfect. So remember when it's on the inside, it's horizontal and it's the opposite of what you think. You gotta take the reciprocal. Yes. What about plus eight on the inside? Left eight and up one. All right, next we have our new stuff, our tr combinations of functions. So here it gives us three functions. Just pay attention to what it's asking and of which two functions that you have to do the operation with. So here we're adding f plus g. So I want to take my f function and add it to g. So I have 3 minus x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 4. If you have like terms, combine them. But other than that, you don't have to simplify. So you could just leave it like this. Now for our combination functions, we wanna check our domains of both functions involved. And it's the overlapping of those two functions. So for three minus x squared, what is our domain there for f? All real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Remember, we only have to check the domain if we have a x in the denominator of a fraction or if we have x in a square root or if the square root is in the denominator of a fraction. So for g, do I have one of those cases here? What would my domain, how do I find my domain for g? Set the denominator not equal to zero. Perfect. So if x is in the denominator, we make it not equal to zero. If x is under a radical, we make it greater than or equal to zero. And if x is in the denominator in a radical, we make it greater than zero. So here I have x squared minus four does not equal zero. How would I solve? Add four, so x squared does not equal four. Then what? Take the square root. So x does not equal what? Plus or minus two. Don't forget the plus or minus. How do I write that in interval notation? It's Awesome. So what would our domain of f plus g be? If f is all real numbers and g is all real numbers except 2 and negative 2, what would our domain of f plus g be? Which one? The g domain. You always pick the overlapping of the two. So if you need to, put them on a number line, figure out what is in both domains, but it would be the more restrictive one here. So negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 2, and 2 to infinity. So since our first one was all real numbers, that would be everything. And then the second one is everything but negative 2 and 2. So we'd have like a hole here and a hole here. So it's all of this, the overlapping. 
so if we had, let's just say hypothetically, if we had a domain that was like greater than zero, it would have to be like this part. So you kind of have to like apply both of them. So if you have two domains that both of them have things going on, just put them on a number line and see where they overlap. Any questions here? All right, let's do number nine. We have G times H. So G is one over X squared minus four times H, which is four X plus seven. So we can multiply these two together. How do I multiply fractions? Straight across. So that would be 4x plus 7 over x squared minus 4. So here we're using g and h. Let's check our domain for h. What is our domain for h? Negative infinity to positive infinity. So here, if I put them on a number line, h would be everything. And g would be everything but negative 2 and 2. So I only take the overlapping parts for my domain, which would be everything but negative 2 and 2. So I'd say negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 2, and 2 to infinity. All right. For number 10, we want to find f divided by g. So I'm going to take my function f, that would be 3 minus x squared and divided by g, which is 1 over x squared minus 4. Keep change flip. Keep the top, change to multiplication, and flip the bottom. So 1 over x squared minus 4 would be x squared minus 4 over 1. And then from here, we'd multiply straight across. So you don't have to FOIL them out. I would just leave it as 3 minus x squared times x squared minus 4. Now for our domain here, we have to check to make sure that we have f, whatever's in the domain of f, whatever's in our domain of g, and g cannot be zero, because g is in our denominator. So what do you think our domain for number 10 would be? So what was our domain for f? All real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So let's put that on our number line. F was all real numbers. What was our domain for G? All real numbers except for negative 2 and 2. And then can G, remember our function G was 1 over x squared minus 4. Can this be equal to 0? Well, it can't be equal to 0 because it's in our denominator. But will it ever be equal to 0? No. Because it would be equal to 0 if our numerator was 0. Or numerator could be 0, but our numerator is 1. So it's never going to be equal to zero. So here it would just be from negative infinity to negative two, from negative two to positive two, and from two to infinity. Let's do 11. So we have g divided by h. So g is 1 over x squared minus 4 over h, which is 4x plus 7. George, what do I do? Keep change, Keep change flip. Keep the top. Change to multiplication. 4x plus 7 is a whole number on the bottom. So I'd make it 4x plus 7 over 1. And when we flip it, it becomes 1 over 4x plus 7. So when we multiply these two, again, you don't have to FOIL out the bottom. It'd be 1 over 
x squared minus 4 times 4x plus 7. Now when we find the domain, let's put it on a number line. So our domain of g was all real numbers except negative 2 and positive 2. Our domain of h was all real numbers, but because h is in the denominator, when we divide, what can h not be? Zero. It cannot be equal to 0. So when you're dividing, you always have to check the denominator and make sure that it's not equal to 0. So my denominator here, I have to solve when it's not equal to 0. So I subtract 7 on both sides. 4x cannot equal negative 7 and divide by 4. So x does not equal negative 7 over 4. Where would that fall on our number line? Almost, Almost to negative 2. So it'd be about here. Negative 7 over 4. So I have a hole there also. So it's all real numbers except these three numbers now. So how would I write that as the domain? Mm hmm Yep. Perfect. Awesome. So this was our function, g divided by h, and then our domain, we just had to make sure that h does not equal 0 also. All right, so here we have our combination, or our Composition functions. Last one is combination. These are compositions where we put functions inside of our other functions. So we always start with the inside and work our way out. So for number 12, I'm going to put g of x inside of f. So I'm going to take my g of x function and plug it into the x in the f of x. So I have 4 times 5 minus x squared minus 2. Now here, if you can combine like terms distribute, you need to do one of those two. So we want to distribute the 4. So we have 20 minus 4x squared minus 2. Then we can combine our like terms, so negative 4x plus 18. Now, our domain of these questions, we always want to check the domain of the inside part and the domain of the whole thing. What's our domain of g of x? If I have 5 minus x squared, what's our domain? All real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. What's our domain of f of g of x? Negative 4x squared plus 18. Why would we equal it to 0? Is it in the denominator of a fraction? No. So what would our domain be? All real numbers. So the overlapping of those two would be all real numbers. All right, let's look at 13. Here we want to find h of f of x. So I'm going to start with f of x and plug it into h. So I'm going to take my function f of x, plug it into the x in h. So I have 3 times 4x minus 2 minus 1. Distribute. 12x minus 6 minus 1. So this would be 12x minus 7. For our domain, we want to check our function of the in the domain of the inside function. So what's our domain of f of x? Thank you. All real numbers. What's our domain of the whole function? 12x minus 7. All real numbers. So the overlapping of those two would be all real numbers. 
in the next one, we're doing the same thing. We want to take H and plug it into G. I think that one on the outside might have just been a typo, but in the answer key, it like multiplies everything times one, which is going to be the same. So if you had a number on the outside like that, you could distribute it to your function that you have. So let's take H and plug it into G. So we have 5 minus 3x minus 1 squared. We might have some like terms here, so let's simplify. What's 3x minus 1 squared? How would I square that? FOIL. We want to write it twice and FOIL it out. So it's like saying 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. So we have 5 minus, this would be 9x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 1. So 5 minus 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. We want to distribute the negative. So it would be 5 minus 9x squared plus 6x minus 1. Do we have any like terms? What's 5 minus 1? So negative 9x squared plus 6x plus 4. So our domain, we want to check the domain of the inside function. What's our domain of h? Negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. And then the domain of the whole function, what's our domain of g of h? Negative infinity to positive infinity. So our domain of the whole thing would be negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, lastly, we want to find our composition with values. So when it asks for g of f of negative 2, we want to start by plugging negative 2 into our f function. So we have 4 times negative 2 minus 2. So this would be negative 8 negative 8 minus 2, which would be negative 10. Now we take our negative 10 and plug it into the g function. So I have 5 times negative negative 10 squared. So 5 minus negative 10 squared. So this would be 5 minus, what's negative 10 squared? 100, and 5 minus 100? Negative 95. So you want to evaluate your inside function, take that number, plug it into the outside one. Any questions there? Let's do 16. We want to find g of 3. So I'm going to take 3, plug it into g. So I have 5 times 5 minus 3 squared. So it'd be 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. So now I'm going to take negative 4 and plug it into h. So this would be 3 times negative 4 minus 1. So negative 12 minus 1, which is negative 13. So our answer would be negative 13. For 17, it asks us to plug it into all three. Which one would I plug it into first? H. So we plug 1 into H. So I have 3 times 1 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So what would I plug 2 into? Plug 2 into G. So I have 5 minus 2 squared. 5 minus 4 would be 1. What am I going to plug 1 into? To f. So f is 4 times 1 minus 2. 4 minus 2 
is 2. So our final answer would be 2. All right, let's look at 19. So here we're going to find the inverse algebraically. So we switch our x and y's. I'm going to make g of x, x, and x, y. So if x is equal to 7 minus 5y squared over 4. We want to solve for y. What would we do to solve for y? We multiply both sides by 4. So we get 4x is equal to the 4 on that's multiplied on the right side cancels out with the 4 that's dividing. So it's equal to 7 minus 5y squared. What would we do next? Subtract 7. So 4x minus 7 is equal to negative 5y squared. Then what? Divide by negative 5. So 4x minus 7 over negative 5 is equal to y squared. And lastly, square root both sides. So square root cancels out with the squared. Now we're just left with y. So we can go ahead and name our inverse. So don't forget the little symbol for the inverse function. So we have the inverse is equal to the square root of 4x minus 7 over negative 5. 